Alright, so Matt Sperling would love to put the cherry on top of his magic career with a win here this weekend. Has brought this Grixis Epiphany deck and will be up against a mono white aggro in the hands of Ray Sato. Now, Cedric, what do you think about this Grixis Epiphany deck? Because it has certainly made several fans out of a lot of the magic players. Well, it is the great unknown, right? Because you have <laughs> the traditional Epiphany decks, which are is it, and they've been seeing success, and then you have this unorthodox take that's playing an additional color for a little bit of discard a little bit of removal the question is 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 it worth it for that third color to play those cards four players here this weekend said absolutely it is it makes me better against other epiphany decks oh, my aggro matchup is still totally fine or at least fine enough that they were comfortable with it now we get to finally see the games unfold with it but did they prepare for mono white did they prepare for this low to the ground aggro deck as opposed to just mono green that's what kind of makes it interesting. Well, one card I'm predicting will be quite good in this matchup here for Spurling is Fading Hope. And if it gets to Leer and is able to recast Fading Hope from the graveyard, we'll just be able to get rid of some of these creatures that have all these pesky counters on them, like the Stonebinders, Familiars, and the Luminarch Aspirants, etc. But uh, I love the start here from Sato. Gets the Stonebinders, Familiar, down Intrepid Adversary. Coming in hot, there is a Dryer Disruption, though. This is the only counter spell that this deck is running, so he's going to fire it off here when he's given the opportunity. And Dwarf Disruption is going to take care of that 2-drop, and it's just a 1-1 one, one on the battlefield right now here for Ray Sato. It's, now we've got Acceleration and Color Fixing here for Spurling as well. I know the Celestis has impressed many who have had the oh, yeah. opportunity to play with this deck. This, this card is cool. I mean, <laughs> having something to do late game when you know both players are just like draw go depending on the matchup obviously it's just so good at getting you cards getting rid of cards that aren't good in certain matchups it's really really good and you're seeing kind of a flashpoint for this deck which is why they are well there's a lot of reasons they're playing the celestis but one thing they can do of course is play the celestis and still have fading hope available as mm -hmm. a play against if they are perceiving a very aggressive metagame that play looks very very good and of course you're going to get the opportunity to scry as well in most instances so a lot to like there um but even more to like with this expressive iteration because yeah, it's that a pretty was a good one great iteration yeah finds really a good land one. finds a demon bolt will be able to take care of redain could do so with a cathartic pyre as is that was really really good ex expressive iteration and the struggle is here and it's very real right now for Ray Sato, whose draw is not that explosive. I mean, he did go one drop, two drop, three drop, so you can't complain too much. And now here's Luminar Aspirin, another great card from this mono white deck. Yeah, so they're going to be applying some pressure here, but we'll be wary of the removal spells that Matt Sperling and his team are playing in this Grixis deck. Let's see, where are we going to go with this Aspirin? You can make Redain into it. 3-4, you can make the stone binding familiar into a 2-2. Two, two. Suppose Aspirin could target itself as well if you were really feeling it and wanted to try something a little bit unique this turn. <laughs> it's tricky because you, you, if you're sitting in race auto seat, you're like, mm, yeah, whatever I target is probably going to die. Yeah, in some capacity, right? Gonna die or get bounced. <laughs> I don't I, I you know, I don't think Spurling has nothing. I think that'd be pretty optimistic. <laughs> yeah. A deck with so much so much dis uh, disruption. Yeah, I'm gonna guess that he's got at least something to stop this from happening. But nevertheless, it's gotta go somewhere, so let's see. Redain, God of the Worthy, might be the target here for this counter. I guess it's a question from Sato, it's like, what is he okay with losing now? That's the question you have to ask yourself, very much so. And now we find the answer to that question, which is Redain, gonna get taken care of. So no counter for you, just a stone binders familiar. A little boop on the snoot there for Matt Sperling. <laughs> and will we follow up here with another stone binders familiar? Nope. It's gonna pass the turn back. Sperling in the driver's seat right now, as far as buying time is concerned. You've got removal and demon bolt. You can buy some time with fading hope. You know, so he's, so he's, I mean, his life total right now is at 17. Like, he's doing totally fine. Looks like Celestis is going to trigger. He's happy to loot. Ooh, iteration. Nice. iteration is step one to the combo. Doing well for himself right now. Yeah, Galvanic Iteration and Demon Bolt is dirty. <laughs> if yeah, that's and, what he wants to use it on. Yeah, and, and, the, and the tough thing now, too, is, you know, so when you think of the Fortel mechanic, right, in most instances, you're like, okay, well, I know what the Fortel card is. It's obviously Epiphany. So, 
you know, <laughs> cool secret, but I know what it is, right? But this this is one of those instances, and this is why this matters. Oh. This is one of those instances where, oh, you think it's Epiphany? You are extremely wrong. Oh, this is gonna hurt if he goes for it. And you I get mean, punished it's so enticing, real bad, right? Yeah. Well, he doesn't have much going on right now. I'm gonna put the counter on the face of save, and it's like actually, what's gonna happen is you're gonna lose, <laughs> you're gonna lose your two best cards. Is what's gonna happen? <laughs> oh, it hurts. It hurts my mono white loving heart. Oh, but you know that's what this deck is designed to do. It's gonna kill absolutely everything and then not let you have another turn. Yep. Pew pew pew. Goodbye. And Stonebinder's familiar remains. The old rock and a hard place. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, Race Auto is a land down now. All of his creatures are dead, basically, barring the good boy. He's hanging out. And Spurling is just sitting pretty. Just happy yeah. to keep switching between day and night. Why not? Yeah, and, and, and Spurling right now, because he's at such a high, low, high life total, excuse me, he can go, you know what? Yeah, I'll pay three mana on my main phase. I'll draw a card and discard a card. Ooh, oh, hello. You heard of this one? You heard, yeah. you heard of this card? You familiar um, with this one? Alrin's Epiphany. Oh, okay, that's, that's a cool good. effect. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good old good time squawk. <laughs> it's nice. all coming together. It's all coming together right now for Madden. It's not coming together here for Ray. That Demon yeah. Bolt turn was brutal. Just brutal. It was indeed. So no foretelling there of uh, Alrin's Epiphany. You're going to send away that Jawari Disruption. Why, why no uh, uh, foretell there? I don't know. Just maybe doesn't feel like he needs to, I suppose. Maybe mm -hmm. keeping up, maybe keeping up, like he's got, you know, keeping up appearances. Yeah, is the word <laughs> I'm looking for. Thank you. Ooh. Gibbity egg. This uh, burn down the house is looking mighty tempting, though, and I think we're going to just, you know, set some fire to the snow deck. Seems good. Yeah, I'll clean that yeah, up. There goes the board. And Race Auto cannot get anything to stick. And the follow-up here of Smoldering Egg. Oh, into Epiphany. Oh, it's going to be a dragon with birds. Oh, this is going to be so gross. All Race Auto can do is just try and get things on the board. Portable Hole will come down. Has a target here. Can grab Smoldering Egg. Finally. And Good Boy gets a counter. And Usher of the Fallen joins the... Fro oh. <laughs> Well, well, yeah, this one's not going to go on much longer if uh, Spurling keeps drawing like this. Good lord. Well, the nice thing about Spurling and the deck construction here from our Grixis Epiphany players is, is you know, it, their deck is built in such a way with, with the addition of the Celestis of being able to see quite a few cards over the course of the game. The deck already manipulates itself pretty well, but, you know, the Celestis just kind of adds on top of that while also giving you yeah. acceleration and fixing it's really, really, really well constructed deck here. I know a lot of people are excited to see how it's going to do, and at least in this particular game, oh boy, Lear. Hey, Lear. Yeah, What's it's up, it's bud? it's doing quite well. Oh yes. Yeah, let's get Lear down on this battlefield. Here's a big butt for you, this doggy and this usher. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh. Woo. Okay. That's a lot of cards. A lot of cards yeah. in hand. Yeah. A lot of cards in hand, yeah. Yeah, your graveyard just became your hand, Spurling. <laughs> Good grief. And the one mana left up with the Celeste, so if there is a removal spell like a Fateful Absence, Fading Hope can just be like, no touchy, thank you. Yeah, Price that's... also seen enough. He's out of yep. there. Let's get the yep. sideboard. Might as well just call it on that one. I, I agree. Uh, here's... So Lear, Lear is one of those cards in this format, and especially for this tournament, that we're going to learn a lot about. But here, here's the shorthand. You get to untap with Lear, it's over oh yeah it's over <laughs> he's just so good yeah so you gotta just make it so that your opponent doesn't have the opportunity to untap with Lear. but this is the old rock and a hard place right because mm. there's a part of you that says i'm playing it's Epiphany. they don't play any creatures i don't want to leave in creature removal well Lear says that you kind of need to leave some yeah. creature removal in and hedge a little bit but you know you can make the argument they might sideboard Lear out because they don't feel like they need it so now the the power of the decision is on the Grixis Epiphany and Lear player side of, am I going to leave it in? Maybe yes, maybe no. You don't know, <laughs> right? And that, that's some power. That's some real power to have in a matchup and over an opponent. Oh, look at this plan here from Sperling, taking out all of the Elrin's Epiphanies, bringing in the Hermits. Going to go for a more creature-based wow. game too. That's interesting. 
you know, this is not the first time I've watched Sperling play Magic. I've been watching him play Magic for a long time. I've known Matt for a while. One thing I enjoy about Matt's play is he is very unorthodox in sideboarding. He is open to doing anything in sideboarding. And so, you know, seeing All Runs Epiphany, I, you know, I didn't have that on my bingo card of seeing all, <laughs> all of them sideboarded out. But it doesn't mean it's wrong. I mean, I, I'd argue it's right. It's, it's some outside-the-box thinking. I mean, the deck is named Epiphany. You can't board out the day of the deck, except <laughs> you can. And well, he is. Yeah, I think he cares more about Lear in this matchup. It's called Grixis Lear that he he put that on as the deck name. So okay, fair I, enough. I respect it. Lear is MVP. Let's take a look here at these opening hands. A very nice hand here for Resato as well for Sperling. Look at that, Hermit Egg Mind Flayer. Let's just steal all of Ray's best creatures. Yeah, quite a few creatures in Sperling's opening hand. And as I say that, he draws a removal spell, to maybe clean something up over the course of this game. Mine is familiar, gonna get in for a point of damage, no two drop, unfortunately, for Ray Sato. Let's see, smoldering egg turn two, perhaps? Looks like it. Let's get that O4 out there. Now this one might be worth destroying. Get that thing out of the way. Maybe yeah. Sperling will have time to draw a card, maybe he won't, but you can't concern yourself with that. You gotta be running downhill. Oh yeah, you gotta go as quick as you darn well can. Elite Spellbinder is a very, very nice draw. Ray Sato will be able to take a look and see what Spurling's working with, but first and foremost, it is Adeline Resplendent Cathar on the battlefield. Let's get some dudes on this board. Yeah, now, now Adeline is a very, very nice play this turn because if this goes unchecked for a turn or two, this thing can run away with the game all by itself. Oh yeah. You know what? It's also a really, really nice card for Spurling to put on his side of the battlefield. That's true. <laughs> we may see that happen here. <laughs> Uh, I think uh, reigning world champion Paolo Vitor may have something to say about that, as his likeness on the card of Elite Spellbinder was considered there by Ray Sato. Yeah, now this is interesting. Do you want to play Elite Spellbinder pre-combat? Do you just want to go to combat first and trigger Adeline and then, you know, kind of do all that stuff? So how do you want to sequence your turn here? Real decision to be had here for Sato. Sato's going to hold up the Guardian of Faith. That's a great card to prevent any shenanigans like a fading hope. So I'm wondering if he'll do it here or if he's happy to just let this go. So I won't get the creature off of Adeline and she'll be off the board, essentially, in combat. She's just disappeared. Where did she go? Mm -hmm. I don't know. So we're going to phase it out bye like bye. this. Now you make your attacks. If the Hermit wants to block, it's going to have to trade with something. That means it'll be off of the battlefield. More importantly, your three drop didn't leave the battlefield. It's still there, and you made an additional play. So Guardian of Faith looks beautiful on that particular turn. And you still got not only Elite Spellbinder in the holster, but Faceless mm -hmm. Haven among the lands. So Sato, things, this is more of how it's supposed to go yeah. here for Mono White. He just has to keep his board intact because we saw in game one it gets demolished you don't really have much hope against this list it's probably got a couple of options here where do we go from here hey you got prismari command available can take care of guardian of faith i, I don't really well I was going to say, I don't think you really have the time to cast Memory Delusion. I think that's probably true. Now, the nice thing here is you could just go deal some damage to create a treasure. Looks like that's what Matt's going to do, and you can make another play. Now, if he didn't want to make this play, he does have... This would mean if he had the treasure left over, he could play Mind Flayer next turn. Maybe the hope is that he just draws a land next turn uh, to be able to play Mind Flayer to be able to yank something. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, there's going to be a bit of a spanner in the works here from Ray Sato's side as Elite Spellbinder comes down, and we'll take a look-ski and see what shenanigans Sperling's up to. Yeah, it is time, I think, for Mind Flayer to bite the dust. So get that out of here. Trigger the Stonebinder's Familiar. That's fun. And, uh, you know, do what you do with the red zone, as it were. Well, will we see a double block here? I was wondering if that was the idea with the Hermit coming down. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, respecting. Respecting is, the two this creatures. Is interesting. So if you attack with the 4 4, you get your token. It's a 5 4. Double block, trade there, get those off the battlefield. I like this. If there's going to be a double block, because you just want to keep snowballing as best you can, yeah. this is actually a really tough decision. You know your opponent's hand, you don't know what they're drawing. 
because um, you know memory deluge is you know your your opponent's saying you don't care really if mm -hmm. about that card right now because you're you're pretty far ahead. They Spurling can't take the time to just tap four mana, you know, draw two cards, hope the library cooperates, all that jazz. So yeah, this is this is an interesting call. This really really is. Wow. Because you have Faceless Haven in the holster. You've got Redain in your hand. You don't have to worry about Mind Flare anymore. Okay. Okay. So yeah, trade there. Are you going to trade with the other thing? Are you just going to make that one? Okay. I think that's fine because if Adeline just sits back, she's just sending in reinforcements. Yeah, I think it's... I, I, I think... I mean, I think there's a lot to think about. There's a lot of positives yeah. and negatives to that. And I mean a lot. <laughs> Malevolent Hermit's going to come back as Benevolent Geist. 2-2 two -two in the air that'll be able to take care of the Elite Spellbinder. Fading Hope in the holster. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, another one off the top. It's a great draw from Sato. Yeah, that's not bad. It gets you some information. I think we're going to see Fading Hope probably bounce. I have to assume it's going to bounce one of the threes. Yeah. Maybe not. We'll Perhaps see. Perhaps Adeline, maybe? It's better if I don't assume. Okay. Fading Hope sends Adeline away, so no extra 1-1 one, one on the board this turn at least. And we get the Scry. That's a Spike Field Hazard. That'll also deal with one of the Flyers. Yeah, so if uh, if Paulo comes in, you know, if Elite Spellbinder, Paulo for sure, <laughs> comes in. I have to trade there. The 1-1s one aren't great at attacking. Yeah, so you get your trade here right now. If you want it. Ray's not sure. <laughs> this is fun. Ray's not sure <laughs> if he wants to attack or not. This is fun. Okay. Yep. Check deck. Am mono white. Yes, attack. <laughs> <laughs> All right, going to crack the clue here. See what's on top of the library for Spurling. The nice thing about having that spike field hazard is... That we can take care of the other spellbinder. Of course, there's another flyer coming up. We know about that. But if the malevolent hermit needs to block the creatures on the ground, it's then a two-two that can block these perpetual one ones that just keep coming. Spurling want to cast it. He's just gonna hold the hazard. Yeah, because he can. Well, maybe they're supposed to cast it now. Do you want to cast it now? On the spellbinder, keep up appearances. Okay, so he's gonna do that, which means he's cardless. Ooh, okay. faithful absence. Okay. Yeah, that's not bad because it gives you the opportunity to play multiple spells in one turn. Yeah. If you're Sato. Sato would love an extra land to start getting this uh, Cave of the Frost Dragon going. Yeah, so Sato wouldn't mind. Sato's in a great spot because lands oh, and yeah. spells are good. So like all of his draw steps are good, right? Mm -hmm. If you're Spurling, lands are great. In some capacity, right? Because it allows you to cast Memory Deluge into potentially Mind Flayer. But also spells are good, like Burn Down the House. So he's in an interesting situation. Iteration. I think he's gotta start there. Yeah. yeah. Gotta start there. Okay, Celestis is pretty good. You know, the incidental yeah. life gain every now and then. Yeah, if you have enough time for it. Yeah. I don't know if he does, right? Because we're going to see mm. three, four, three, make a token, four, faces haven, five. Yeah, so he plays this because now, now, because I think, I think, I think Spurling's dead, right? Because you, fa you faithful absence this EOT, haven is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, I think this should be dead? over. Yeah, all the same, right? Because you can, you can go activate faithless haven, mm -hmm. go to attack step. Trigger Adeline. Kill. Faceless yeah. Haven. Yeah, Faceless Haven has Vigilance. Now, Faithful Absence this. Whee! More than enough damage. Yeah, all right. All right. All right. Nice. Hey, look at that. Mono White getting the W there in game number two between Ray Sato and Matt Sperling. That was that was a pretty dicey game. Right? There, there were a few spots where were like, oh yeah, Matt Sperling will be fine. But Ray Sato just kept finding gas. Yeah, and you saw the power of Elite Spellbinder in that matchup right there, right? Yeah. Making those cards more expensive, getting some more information to work with as well. And you also, 
in a way, saw some of the shortcoming, shortcomings excuse me, of Fading Hope in this particular matchup. It doesn't mean that it's bad. Don't get me wrong, but it's at its best against Mono Green because those threats are a little bit more expensive. Uh, and some of them, well, I'd say the white ones are better like on impact, right? Adolin comes yeah. down, makes a bozo. Elite Spellbinder <laughs> has, has and enters the battlefield trigger, right? So all yeah. of that stuff. It's a little bit it's a little bit weaker against mono white than it is against mono green. Yeah. Bad news here for mono white fans though. Bad news on the draw for game three. Yeah, that's not where you want to be, but uh no. I guess hoping for a great match between these players. And just just like you were mentioning, all of these well, most of the mono white creatures, if you bounce them, they have the ETB effect, you know, and also some of them get better the longer it goes. Intrepid adversary, you bounce that, well, it's gonna come back bigger and then the team is buffed, so ugh. Board wipes see. would be great. Well, that's okay. If, if you, I think, well, raise hand is a pretty easy keep. Hmm. If you're Matt, I think that's a little bit tougher. But I do think it's good enough. You've already got a removal spell. You've got an iteration to kind of smooth her out. Memory Deluge, when you're on the play, is a little bit better than when you're on the draw. You saw the last game. Spurly never had the opportunity to cast that powerful instant. And it looks like he is already on a mulligan to six, so one of these is going to have to go away. Looks, looks like it's going to be light way. step, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, let's get the show on the road here. Sure, the Fallen down the battlefield. A lovely one two punch from Ray Sarge. If he's able to find land number three, his hand is beautiful. Doesn't find one just yet. But we'll still be able to keep delivering the beats. Powered kill says no, thank you. Leave my face alone. So Sato hasn't drawn the you know the third land yet, but I would say that's fine um, because he's got plenty of things to do in the interim. Mm. Now the game gets easier when the third land shows up. Don't get me wrong, and he'd love to draw <laughs> it next turn uh, if you're him. But for now, he's got stuff to do, uh, which is important. Ooh, nice draw here for Matt Sperling. Mm-hmm. Gonna get the Celestis down, that'll ramp him up a little bit and leave up Fading Hope to deal with whatever Critter needs dealing with. Usher the Fallen, not the draw that Sato wanted to see, but like you mentioned, still has things to do. He's got the Sun Gold Sentinel and a second adversary to get down. Yeah, and so the fear here that I had is anytime you're playing, when you're playing a hyper aggressive deck like this, you, you, obviously you don't want to miss land drops and you have things to do in the interim. Mm. But the one thing when you're playing against a control strategy like this one is. A card like Memory Deluge, if the game is going the way that you want it to go, your opponent doesn't have time to do that, right? Because it's so expensive, and it's so powerful yeah. if they do have the time to do that. And, and the way this game is shaping up, Sperling's going to have the time to resolve that and probably chain into other things. So that's why, on you know, on this this last channel we just watched, drawing a third land and making Deluge, you know, hitting it with Spellbinder, I mean, that's huge, and he didn't have the opportunity to do that. Yeah, uh, super unfortunate for Sato that that wasn't how the turn shook out it's yeah. now gonna turn to night time oh boy hello mind flayer yeah you might have to wow what, what are you gonna do I, mean... I think you just i think you i think you discard iteration honestly because you got you got well man, yeah delish gets you more cards right but yeah i mean it, it, kind it's of... in, in a way in a way i mean you're gonna be able to cast it so i, I yeah i think you just i think i think we discarded i, I would have discarded too it's worth, think, it's, worth think, it's worth thinking about. Back on the battlefield, it's going to get rid of Fading Hope. It's messing with uh, any possible Leer's plans. Galvanic Iteration is the only good hit in that. Oh, oh goodness me, too. Yeah. Yeah. Let's start it stealing things. It ain't fun. It ain't fun. <laughs> this is oh, mine now. what? Still no third land here for Race Sato. Did find a removal spell though, so we'll be able to get back the Sun Gold Sentinel. Ah, that's timely. That's definitely timely. Mine. Do, no do <laughs> not want to overlook how big of a draw that was. Unfortunately though, there is a second one that's gonna come down and uh, give Race Sato even more headaches, but there's the third land, so that's a good Good spot to be right now. Redain or Spellbinder? Where do we go? I think Redain because of 
values. Yeah, that's so, available so, next turn with the land. Yeah, it's not, it's not fair because I'm working on perfect. I'm working with perfect information, um, but <laughs> I think I think that's probably where you have to go. I don't know if you can attack. Well, I don't know if you want to attack with Intrepid Adversary this turn or not because like you're just kind of trading with Sun Gold Sentinel. I think Swirling's just going to leave Mind Flayer on the battlefield because he can bounce it with his own Fading Hope or something like that and take something else. So do you want to make this exchange right now or not is a question, or do you just want to play Redain, pass with the Intrepid Adversary on the battlefield, and you know, I hate to say it, but kind of hope for the best. <laughs> it's not exactly this, the position you want to be in against this no. Grixis Epiphany deck. N nope. No, you don't. Oh, the time is ticking. Let's see which way Ray Sato goes. Can't double spell with the two creatures because there's no second white source. Yeah, and if you're if you're just checking off boxes right now, the way I kind of look at this is like, do I want to play Usher the Phone? No, that's the weakest thing I can do. <laughs> do I want to play Intrepid Adversary? No, that's probably the second and third weakest thing I can do. So now you're you're just deciding between is it Elite Spellbinder or is it Redain? And I think Redain has the highest ceiling in a spot like this, mm -hmm. so he's just going to deploy that. Oh, what? Oh, oh, you see what I see? Oh, oh I very uh. much do. <laughs> I very oh, much do. Oh, that's so gross. Skullbinding Iteration gonna cause both of these creatures to be sacrificed to soul shatter oh that hurts so much be and now time. all of a sardine matt sperling is the beatdown yeah yep. let's go let's exile your graveyard <laughs> great draw from sperling great draw oh and it goes today able to get rid of the second copy of celestis that's so good Man, this card does work. Celestis is nice. It is nice. Okay. That uh, at least saves your board from a future blowout. <laughs> well. Temporarily. Just two mana more. <laughs> yeah. Which Sperling's got. Yeah, we, we sometimes see control combo decks like this one do this after sideboard, right? Which is they can get away. And this is what makes this style of deck very powerful. Um, we've seen this over the course of Magic's history, but like game one, you're kind of doing your combo thing, and then game two and game three, depending on, you know, what your opponent has in their sideboard and everything else, you can move away from the combo stuff, which in this instance is Epiphany, and move towards maybe just a controlling deck with some creatures. We're seeing that here in Mind Flayer and Galvanic Iteration, not copying Epiphany, but other things, and just play more of a control deck with creatures. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's that flexibility that is the real draw to an archetype like this, right? Because this Mono White deck, which I think is... Well positioned against Epiphany decks in a general sense, mm. it's, it's struggling more against this one because of of all this flexibility that Spurling yeah. has um, when it comes to sideboarding. You know, th there's not many ways you can go with a mono white deck. It's a very linear no. strategy. It goes one way, and that is straight to your face. And if That's you can right. stop that, you're going to win. Oh, this is just so brutal. And you know what's also what's also quite cheeky with the Sun Gold Sentinel is Celestis makes mana of any color, so it's just like, oh cool, I'm gonna get protection from white now, thanks. Yeah, it can do that little hexproof thing too if things do line up. So that's actually a pretty cool aspect of that card too. <laughs> well, easy part. Yeah. Yes. I, I mean, it's not. It's not. I mean, to to be to be completely fair, like it's not over. No, no. The game's not by a long like, shot. Yeah, because like Sato, Sato's sitting at a pretty high life total, but now he's got to figure out a way. To, like the tough thing here for, for Ray is got to figure out a way around like this cryoclasm that he, or excuse me, the cinderclasm that's over there, right? Yeah. And it's just how do I, how do I maneuver through, even though it costs four, it's like how do I maneuver through this when my hand is elite spellbinders, plural. Yeah. And Usher of the Fallen and Intrepid Advent to go a lot of one toughness creatures over there. <laughs> you know, how am I supposed to work through this? I mean, if it gets if it gets fired off now, I mean it's it's at the end step, so it looks like it's going to get fired off now. Intrepid adversary can pump the team past the point of death, basically. But uh, the thunderclasm going away now is it's, it's fine. There goes the sun gold right. sentinel. And just leaving the mind flayer hanging out on Sperling's side of the battlefield. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so enough to cast, enough to flash back uh, memory deluge right now. It's gonna pass the turn. No attack with the mind flare. I mean, the faceless haven is ready and raring to activate. Hmm. 
So here comes Stonebinder's Familiar. Mm -hmm. It'll prompt the Memory Deluge from Matt Sperling. Let's take a look at seven cards. Yeah. It's really, it's really nice sequencing here from, from Sato, too, starting with the one drop that affects the graveyard. Mm -hmm. um, because now your Elite Spellbinder, after the Deluge resolves, can nab something. Uh, and there's very there's something very much worth nabbing. Right oh, yes. Oh, yeah. So, Elite Spellbinder coming on down. If Sperling had waited there, he would have been able to Jawari Disruption the Spellbinder. Yeah, if things, if things had gone that way, absolutely. Mm. So now Lear's going to cost seven. Okay. Oh, it's okay. He's got the mana for it. Yep. <laughs> the discard here from the Celestis is going to be Jawari Disruption into the bin. Hermit is the draw for turn. Let's get iterating. Maybe? Yeah, we might be. We might be. Sperling's got so many options right now. That's the other thing that's extremely scary about this is yeah. you know, he can fla he can flash back Galvanic uh, Iteration into Power Word Kill. He can cast Iteration. He can bring back Hermit from the graveyard or just cast one in his hand. Or you can take a look at a few more cards and sculpt things out because he still does sit at a very high life total of 12 life. I will say that once this deck shifts out of the Elrond's Epiphany game plan, the opponents stick around a lot longer. Like They do. They do. Sato's been quite resilient here and just, you know, keeping things on the board, applying pressure. Yeah, the, the game's kind of drag on a little longer, but you also, and, and this game might not be the best example of what I'm going to mm -hmm. say, but you also have to think that, yes, Sperling isn't killing in such an explosive fashion, but he does have a real stranglehold on the game. Yeah. Right? So even though we are playing more turns, I would say that Matt's in real control of what's going on. Here. Yeah, for sure. We're going to see Prismari come on, take care of the Elite Spellbinder. Follows that up with a Malevolent Hermit. And if he wants to, could get in there with the Mind Flayer, but just passes the turn back. It's unblocking duty. Yeah, I, I think what Matt's plan is going to be over the course of this game is, you know, because there's, there's been times when he could have gotten a little frisky with the Mind Flayer if he <laughs> wanted to. I, I think it's just going to be grind you down into a pulp. Yep. Uh, and eventually, I'm going to find a window to resolve Lear. And when I when I get the opportunity to untap with Lear on the battlefield, we're, we're done. You know, yeah, I, think, this, I think that's the plan. This game will be over quite quite quickly once Lear does hit the board. Yeah. And there's stuff and things to do in the graveyard, which right now there's quite a few things. You know, this deck, this Grixis Epiphany deck, this was the big question. We saw Is It Epiphany a little bit early in this round from Andre Strosky, a more traditional take. Now we're seeing Grixis Epiphany against Mono White. I imagine that our Mono White players here in Sato... Nikawa, they were very much interested in playing against Is It Epiphany. Yeah. How well do they do against Grixis Epiphany? And more importantly, you know, how well do they do against against Lear? Um, we're, we're finding out right now this Grixis Epiphany deck looks really well situated against creature decks and other Epiphany decks. But I mean, it's early. Don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. it's early, but it, it's been impressive at least in this matchup. <laughs> so you mentioned many things to do for Matt Sperling. Could get Lear out and start killing stuff if he really wanted to. But it's just going to end the turn here, it looks like. Oh, so Matt, many... let's go. Let's do it. Yeah, and, and, I, and I like this from Sperling, too. I like this because <laughs> because it's just kind of like, you know, what's, what's, what's the worst you can do? I mean, I am tapping seven mana on my own turn, but I've also got access to more mana and more things to do. So, look, you got to have a removal spell, like, right now. Yeah. There is none we can see in hand. And, and and the Hermit actually kind of covers a removal spell, too. So I, I love this play from Sperling. And as I've said a couple times here, and, and I think it's going to come to fruition, Sperling gets untapped with Lear. We're, we're donezo. Yep. No removal there for Ray Sato. So yeah. this isn't looking good. Look at all the cards that Matt Sperling has available to him. Ray Sato knows the writing's on the wall. Good game to Matt Sperling. And that is going to be a victory for the Grixis Epiphany deck.